Apparently I'm into tiny phones now. First of all, hi, if you're new around here, we like to play with tech and make videos about it. But until this point, I've been a big phone person. Every single time I was given the choice, I went with the bigger model. From the bigger screen to the bigger battery, everything seemed more appealing about it. But I can say it just right off the bat, this is my favorite iPhone ever. But let me tell you why. You see, for the longest time, I've wanted to do everything apart from work on a single device. But, but last year, I started using an iPad Pro regularly, and I realized that so many things are better done there. Apps show you more, multitasking is a breeze, and you get a large 120Hz display with great speakers for everything media related. And that suddenly made me realize all the compromises I've been making over the years to accommodate my impossible pursuit. And after using the 12 mini side by side with the 12 Pro Max for the past two months, I don't think you'll be missing out on much by going with this little guy. But let's take it from the top, starting with the display. It's a 5.4 inch and it's the only iPhone that has slightly reduced bezels all around. It also only has 625 nits of max brightness in the entire display versus 800 on the Pro models, but this difference is very difficult to notice unless you're watching HDR content. It's completely flat display like the rest of the phone with this new boxier design and I love it. It's different and at the same time it's very similar to the old iPhone 5 design that so many people still love to this day. It also is the first time in a long time that you have to do minimal hand gymnastics to use a phone. A tricks like the pinky finger in the bottom for extra support or hand placement gymnastics to reach the top corners of a phone are something that has become second nature to me after years of having big phones, but not having to do them is definitely more comfortable. And even if the pockets in my jeans are pretty big, sometimes a big phone can be slightly uncomfortable when sitting down. And the weight, I mean, uh, this is like a feather compared to the 12 Pro Max. It loses some of that premium feel that we associate with the weight, but it's indefinitely more comfortable to hold in all situations. The keyboard can be challenging at first because of how much smaller everything is. It is definitely not a problem after you get used to it. A and swipe typing is much more comfortable since you can much easier reach everywhere. All around, it's a big reminder why small phones were the norm and really makes you question if what you're getting in return when going with the big model of any phone is actually worth it. If only they could make a matte back glass to go with the matte side rails. I don't know, a man can dream. Just like all other new iPhones, it's rocking the A14 chip. And of course it has more power and more power efficiency than last year. But in all honesty, in day-to-day -day tasks, you'll be hard pressed to tell the difference between them. And that's a good thing. Where that difference becomes more apparent is in the camera. We all know most of the improvements we've been seeing over the past few generations have been due to improvements on how the image is processed. Comparing that large main sensor with this one just showed how important software really is. Yes, the 12 Pro Max has the better camera, but I don't think the difference is as big as you expect, and more importantly, I don't think most people will be able to tell the difference. The ultra-wide camera is the same across all models, but now you can use Deep Fusion to improve image sharpness in most situations, and at night, use night mode when the light is not so great, making this ultra-wide finally as useful as it can be. The main sensor is the same as it has been since the iPhone XS days, but even compared to last Last year's 11 Pro Max, the improvements in image detail, noise, color accuracy and dynamic range are substantial. You can be sure that the picture you are taking will turn out great 9 times out of 10 and that's all I could ask for. You lack the Pro features I talked about in the 12 Pro Max review like Pro RAW, the telephoto lens and the LiDAR sensor, but just like I told on that review, I don't see all those extra features being worth the almost 500 euro price difference between the Mini and the Pro Max. Just think about it. You can save 500 euros or you can buy a PS5 or you can buy a pair of AirPods and an Apple Watch SE. Those are meaningful improvements that you can do to your daily life. 
and I think the 12 mini strikes the perfect balance between keeping the actual useful features from the big models and keeping all the more situational ones out and saving you cash. Even battery life that I was pretty worried about was surprisingly good. I could go more than a day with light use around one to two hours of screen on time on each day and still be left with a little bit of juice at the end of the second day. But on higher use days, I could go between four to five hours if I want to stretch it and get to bed with around 10% battery left. It's definitely not a deal breaker for me, but at the same time, it, it's definitely not a battery champ as well. But not everything is great. Of course, uh, the phone can get quite toasty when playing games, for example, and it's kind of expected because you got pretty much the exact same phone interior just with a smaller battery and you get less area to dissipate all the heat. Thanks to that, MagSafe charging is slower at only 12 watts instead of the 15. And if you want to wirelessly charge in a normal Qi pad, it can be difficult in some pads because of the camera bump and the overall size of the phone getting in the way of proper alignment. One weird trick that I found is that thanks to the magnets on the back of the phone and the weight of the phone, you can mount this in any magnetic car mount without any accessories and it will work great. It still suffers from all the same issues that I talked about in my Pro Max review, like no 120Hz, no USB-C, no 5G millimeter wave in Europe, uh, no charger included in the box, no touch ID alternative for when your face is covered, no reduced notch size, but somehow the cheaper price point and the cute form factor make it a little more acceptable to me. Another benefit that I found by going with a smaller phone is that I sort of felt less compelled to spend long periods of time using it just because, well, it's a smaller screen, so you tend to feel less focused into it. This is an idea that I spent more time and went into greater depth in an iPad video that I did at the end of last year. Uh, that should be linked up there if you're interested. But to wrap it all up, if I ended up my 12 Pro Max review saying that that one is the best iPhone that you can get, and you probably shouldn't get it, this one is definitely the best iPhone that you should consider, and it's definitely, definitely my favorite one. It strikes the perfect balance between all the big features from the new iPhones in a package that just doesn't get in the way. And uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, oh but, but you're here, but, but it's nothing about iPhones. It's nothing related to Apple in general. Uh, you're just here for some feline action, and um, I can't wait to show it to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, y'all know what to do. Maybe subscribe, comment down below, anything you probably want. And um, yeah, bye.